your presence in this space is no mere coincidence. It's a meticulous and intentional connection designed to deliver the profound message of Apostle Joshua Selman. Everyone here who is in debt, you are in financial problems in the name that is above all names. By this same mystery of wisdom, bringing men, bringing resources, come out of that financial situation. Come out of borrowing and begging and owing. I say it again, come out of begging and borrowing and owing. You will owe no man nothing but love. In the name of Jesus. And by this impartation, all the men, whether you call them business partners or destiny helpers or announcers or whatever it is, in whatever capacity, I gravitate them towards your life. I gravitate helpers towards your life. I gravitate the wealthy towards your life. Helpers of the war, may they find you. May they bless you. May they find you. May they bless you. May they find you. May they bless you. May God use them to lift you. May God use them to announce you. I say it again, may God use them to bless you. May God use them to announce you. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over everyone under the sound of my voice in this place across the overflows online in the name of Jesus tonight by reason of this prophetic word receive right now the spirit of wisdom receive right now the spirit of wisdom extraordinary wisdom wisdom as strange solutions wisdom as divine direction wisdom as the capacity to speak right to say what needs to be said in the presence of your helpers wisdom as capacity upon your mind to think productively receive it in the name of Jesus For everyone who has struggled financially, as an individual, as a ministry, as a business, as a believer, as a family person, I decree and declare, wisdom bails you out of pain and shame. Wisdom bails you out of pain and shame. Wisdom bails you out of pain and shame. Father, let your word speak speedily over our lives. And to Jesus be all the glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. The season of abundance. The season of abundance. You will hear testimonies on this altar that you will marvel and wonder. I'm not talking of ordinary people. God will lift people literally from nothing and place an ornament of glory upon their heads. I'm saying this to you as a prophetic word in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Psalm 66 verse 12. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's read together. One to read. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. One more time. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. You are as powerful as your ability to discern what God is doing per time and per season. God is an eternal God, is an eternal king. He does not dwell in time. He does not even dwell in eternity. But as far as his work with men is concerned, he's fragmented his dealings with men into times and seasons. Someone say times and seasons. One more time, say times and seasons. That means God is not always doing the same thing. Are we together? God has a program. And that program is fragmented into times and seasons. And one of the ways that you win with God is to sustain the intelligence and the faculty of discernment 
to know when seasons change and to know God's emphasis per season and per time. The Bible says, and of the tribe of Issachar, men who had an understanding of the times that they knew what Israel ought to do. And the Bible says, as a result, they became captain. They were heads. Other people had to look onto them for direction. Hallelujah. A believer must be one who sustains the ability to stand upon your watch, to set yourself upon the tower and hear what God is saying. Else, a season will come and pass. And like Jacob, he will say, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. It is amazing how prophetic seasons come and pass and many believers may not even be aware. Remember our scripture in Acts chapter 19? It was a dispensation of the Holy Ghost already. The Holy Ghost was already moving, empowering people, recruiting people. And here were certain disciples who did not even know whether there be any Holy Ghost. So it is possible that a season can be upon believers, upon the body of Christ. And yet we may not sustain the discernment to understand what God is doing. And then we will be like a people robbed, a people defrauded, a people cheated. Because we are unable to enter that which God wants us to enter. And so this is the assignment of the apostolic and the prophetic. To be able to incline our ears and to receive that which God intends to do. In the lives of his people per season and per time. And not just to be excited but then to know how we need to align you have been taught here that knowing what god wants to do is only one part if god wants to heal you you must know what you need to do to participate with that healing grace if god wants to anoint you if god wants to raise you an apostle a prophet god wants to you know empower you it's important for you to not just know what god wants to do but to understand how to partner with him partnership with god is how things prophecies seasons are manifest we profit from seasons when we number one discern those seasons and number two we receive the strategy for partnership are we learning praise the name of the lord there are a few things that i want us to know about god number one the bible says in psalm 115 verse 16 psalm 115 verse 16 it says the heaven even the heavens are the lord's it says but the earth have he given unto the children of men the heaven of heavens belong to the lord but the earth have he given to the children of men this is a very profound revelation the meaning of that is that everything that will happen upon the earth no matter how prophetic it is God is going to use the instrument of men. Are we together now? He says the earth hath he given, not will he give. It's been given already. The earth has he given to the sons of men. It says, what is man that thou art mindful of, not the son of man that thou visitest him, that you have made him a little lower than the angels, a little lower than Elohim. You have crowned him with glory. You have crowned him with honor. Then it says, you have set him over the works of your hands. You have set him over the works of your hands. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28, in the making of man, the Bible says, and God bless that man. Listen, it says, verse 26, he says, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness and let them, the man now, have dominion over the earth, the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over the earth and everything that creeps upon the earth. When it has to do with the matters of the earth, it is the business of man. Are we together now? every matter that is within the circumference of the earth is not just god dependent it is man dependent the matters of the earth is the business of men the matters of the earth is or are the business of men it's important for you to know that god can do without men but he has so designed a system that the moment his dealings his happenings are to be made manifest upon the earth he must find men and he will flow through men this is very powerful in ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 9 we're discussing the seasons of abundance it says moreover the profit of the earth there is such a thing in the bible as the profit of the earth that means the earth has been embedded with treasures 
all kinds of treasures and the bible says in designing that system god intended that the profit of the earth becomes for all are we together now the profit of the earth is not for some it's not for kings it's not for nobles it's not for westerners the profit of the earth please leave that scripture there is for all it says even the king himself is served by that which comes from the field this immediately tells you that God is a God of portions. God is a God of portions. That means everyone he allows to find expression upon the earth, there are portions allotted for every man. Are we together? When the nation of Israel came out of uh, Egypt, Joshua, Moses started and Joshua was mandated to apportion lands unto them. It was in the Bible. That Joshua would apportion lands unto them. In fact, I think that should be Joshua 13 and verse 1. I hope I got that right. He was already old, but there were still portions of land. Now Joshua was old and stricken in age, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remained yet much land to be possessed. And he started advising him on how to distribute that land. The entire chapter 13 was the distribution of the land to various tribes. God is a God of portions. That means if you ever found yourself upon the surface of the earth, I tell you, there is a portion for you allotted in God's economy. And if you, whether or not you will access it in your lifetime, it's a different discussion altogether. But know this for a fact, that God does not create people who are blessed even economically at the expense of, of others. That is a Babylonian system. Every time you see God's system, you will see that none lacked. That was the strategy of the early church. Are we together? Economic stratification is not the strategy of the kingdom. It is the system of cosmos, the Babylonian antichrist system that robs others and deprives others and then wealth circulates around the hands of a few. But that was not so from the beginning. And if God is speaking prophetically that you have stepped into a season of abundance, then it's important for you to know how to get your portion from the earth. Do you believe that? The profit of the earth is for all. Even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. Hallelujah. Now, I spoke one time in this place on the subject of financial captivity and I want to make a recap there are very important points that I want to bring out that I believe will help to connect us to the prophetic word that God has brought to us I was really excited when I woke up from my dream I rejoice for myself I rejoice for koinonia and I rejoice for you too hallelujah because it's with joy we draw from the wells of salvation and there are a few things that I did say that I want you to please pay attention to I spoke about a few factors that are responsible for lack and want and poverty and let me plead that you rewrite re relearn these principles again as we discuss this important prophetic subject because just because god has spoken does not mean you will come into that experience there are a number of reasons why many believers in spite of the prophetic season the advantage of the season they will remain in lack and want they will remain beggarly and I want to run through some of those reasons I wrote there. Are you ready? Number one. These are the factors responsible for poverty, for lack, for want. In spite of the fact that the Bible says that the Lord is our shepherd and as such we should not be in want. The first reason I gave you and I'm repeating it now is ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. You want to put that down very quickly. The first reason why believers are incapacitated and limited economically in spite of God's economic program for the excelling of the saints is that they are ignorant of God's financial system or they have incomplete knowledge. So the first reason is ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. Very quickly, let me give you number two. The second reason why many believers are in poverty they are in lack and want is the absence of value that is needed and useful please write that down that's a very very important point to note the absence of value that is needed and useful we live in a world where your value is what gives you a space 
if you do not have value that is needed and useful, you will most likely remain in lack and want. Are you ready for number three? The third reason I gave you, and I'm repeating it now for your hearing and learning, is lack of productivity and excellence. This is the third reason why many believers are kept perpetually in poverty, lack and want. Lack of productivity. What is productivity? Converting your value to products and services, serving them with excellence to a targeted consumer base. This is what we call productivity. Just because you have discovered your value does not make it rewardable. It is at the point of that conversion that your value becomes rewardable. Are we together? I'm running through the list. So number one, I said ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. Number two, the absence of value that is needed and useful. Number three, lack of productivity and excellence. Can I give you number four? And I'm going to dwell a bit on that tonight as we delve into this very serious prophetic subject. The absence of strategic relationships. The absence of strategic relationships. The fourth reason why believers are kept in lack and want in poverty and penury is that they lack strategic relationships i remember when we discussed this subject we considered john chapter 5 and verse 7 the man at bethesda said i have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool that was his problem he knew where the solution was but the man to help and assist him was not there number five the fifth reason why believers end up in lack want poverty is the bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment or the absence or the lack of spiritual empowerment. There is an empowerment component to wealth and abundance in all its ramifications. And perhaps I should go ahead of myself to tell you that when we talk about abundance, we're not limiting it to finance alone. I hope you know that by now. That when we talk about abundance, abundance deals with supplies and sufficiency, not just finances alone. In the kingdom, when we discuss the subject of abundance, we are not limiting it to just finance. Finance is an important component, but there are many people who have finance, but they do not have abundance. Abundance captures finance, but it also captures all everything that makes for your sufficiency. Bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment is the fifth reason why believers end up poor. They do not know that when it has to do with the business of accessing finance as a Christian in a bedeviled world in an antichrist system, you will need an empowerment from heaven. Are we together now? There is such a thing as the power to get wealth. There is such a thing as the power to prosper. Number six, we identify the sixth reason why believers, all men really, but believers remain in lack, in want and poverty as impatience the sixth reason is impatience impatience the bible says he that is hasty to be wealthy will not be innocent god is a god of speed god brings acceleration in fact that is the thrust of our discussion tonight god can bring men into accelerated blessings but god does not rush people arbitrarily the passion to want to make it instantaneously is what robs men of following due spiritual process and the bible says if you follow such a path you will not be innocent can i give you the seventh and final reason laziness laziness what is laziness the laxity to think the laxity to take action that inertia that refusal to engage your mind to engage your energy productively is called laziness you will be surprised how many believers are lazy all wise. They are lazy spiritually. They are lazy in terms of engaging their minds. They are lazy in terms of submitting themselves to the discipline of learning, the discipline of putting knowledge to action. And so many of them become poor. Allow me to do a final rundown on the list. Number one, ignorance of God's financial system. Number two, the absence of value that is needed and useful. Number three, lack of productivity and excellence. Number four, the absence of strategic relationships. Number five, the bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment. Six, impatience. Final reason, seven, laziness. May you be delivered from all this. Shout a believers, amen. May you be delivered from all this. Now, please let me have your attention. I have taught you in this house 
that even though we are in the world the bible says we are not of the world do you know what that means there is a system that governs the earth as we know there is a system that governs the thinking of the earth the policies that have framed the economic system of nations are, is largely antichrist are we together now now some of those policies are great and profitable but that you are in a system that did not factor honor to god in designing that system so you would find out that for everyone who comes um who declares the lordship of christ over their lives you are you are working within a system that is already against you by default listen very carefully the world system is founded on number one hatred disdain for god and his ways you have to get used to this the world system it was not designed to honor god it does not factor the supremacy of the god of heaven and so when you find yourself as a believer within the cosmos within this system you will find out that your loyalty to god will make you to conflict with many things that are the norms of the system for instance the world system is a system that was founded on selfishness say after me selfishness selfishness and self-centeredness is not an unusual thing in the world system it's only unusual to you as a believer that means you are immersed in a system where you would usually not find anyone participate in your destiny until they see how it can profit them are we together you will hardly find people who are kind to you indefinitely there usually will be something they are looking onto that is the world that we're dwelling the world system is a system that is immersed in wickedness even your bible says the whole world lies in wickedness what does that mean your compassion is not factored no it doesn't matter whether you are destroyed in the process men have an obsession to become men have an obsession to advance men have an obsession to prosper it does not matter who is wounded who is hurt who is destroyed or who even dies in the process this is a desperation that we find in our world so when you are angry that someone cheated to get to where he is or someone was corrupt that unfortunately that is the system but now when the believer comes into Christ, part of your loyalty to the kingdom is that you must pledge that you are not going to subscribe to that system. There is an implication to that pledge. When you come into Christ and now say, I will walk, I will live a life that is corrupt free, no bribery, no corruption. Are we together? For instance, you are occupying an office and you have access to just manipulate one figure and one billion naira is yours quietly. But because you have pledged your allegiance to the God of the Bible, the first thing that will suffer is you and your children and everything around you until you now learn the kingdom system. Now, the danger, the trouble with church is that on one hand, we tell people to walk in holiness and righteousness, void of all of these antichrist practices. But we do not show them the nobler and more superior kingdom system. So on one hand, they avoid all of those things and they clearly become and remain victims. They become cheated. Are we together now? It ought not to be so. There is a nobler kingdom system. Listen, let me tell you. If you understand God's kingdom system, you will never admire Satan's system of prospering men. Because it's by far insultive. It's by far degrading. There is a nobler, more superior kingdom system. But until you know it, you will remain a victim of regrets from not partnering with Satan. Are we together? I've seen people who have become and remain victims. It has affected their marriages, affected their children, affected the education of their children. They had an opportunity to compromise, but on account of their stance for God, they refused. But now you think about this. If you are making that much sacrifice for God and he calls himself love, it means that there is a system he has designed already for you. Am I right on that? In our nation here we have, and I thank God for that, the police force and the paramilitary, there is a growing, there is a growing, growing passion for integrity. And right now we keep seeing in the news where perhaps people will try to bribe a police officer and he will refuse. You see, the 
and 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 for many of them who refuse you see that eventually their superiors reward them no matter how small that reward system now started showing that integrity has value god will never tell you to abstain from to avoid you know anything that corrupts your integrity and not give you a superior alternative that brings you to a decent life with dignity that is not the god of the bible are we together now that your wife should never look at you and say so we are in this state now simply because you said no to the antichrist system it should never be so but because most believers do not know god's way of doing things he does not know we, we don't know god's way of bringing us into the abundance bringing us into prophecy many believers keep crediting their weakness even financially economically they make it look like it's god that is god should be blamed he's the reason why i am where i am i'm telling you god sent me to tell you it's not true god has no hand in the calamity and financial catastrophe of many people he's already made a way it's up to you to understand that way and engage it by faith i hope you know the day an individual gets healed that's not the day jesus died for the person's healing that was the day he discovered that truth or had access to the anointing that will bring him into that experience that is the same thing too economically the day you prosper is not the day god prospered you it is the day you found the truth you engage the truth ye shall know the truth have you forgotten that scripture it says the truth shall make you free if you live a defeated life financially you will still go to heaven and then you will discover that god has spoken great things concerning you his zion but you did not maximize your life spiritually i'm told of a story i think it's just some fiction to illustrate how that a gentleman one time was taking a voyage from one nation to another and when he got there they noticed that he was not coming for lunch and dinner within the ship he locked himself and he was just praying he had starved for days without food because unknown to him that the train ticket covered his meals and he did not know that and he would lock up himself starving with a lot of pain getting lean getting sick and one time, I think one of the, you know, attendants came to knock his door and he opened and he said, we notice your seat has been empty. And the person said, well, um, I'm not sure I have any seat here. Are you not a, a bona fide passenger here? Yes. Did you pay? Yes. There's a provision for you to enjoy your meals. And the person said, well, I don't know. Mine is just to arrive safely. Now, whether or not that person knew did not stop his seat from being vacant. My goodness, how many believers do not know that God is a God of portions, that God is kind enough. The Bible tells us, watch this, it says, if you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Just because you are not aware does not mean the provision is not there. Can God ask you to start a vision and not create the system of empowerment? What sort of a God is that? Can God empower you to start a family? grant you access to children and not empower you to be able to take care of them with dignity that is not the god we serve we must not allow our ignorance misrepresent god are we together yes it says worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us honor and glory and power and riches and blessing that's what he died to receive for us worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us he received all this for us power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings this is what he received for us now whether you walk in the experience of these things or not is another subject but it's important for you to know that you have stepped into a season where god wants to see you step into abundance so that you are able to serve the purposes of the of the lord if you believe that shout amen now i want to show you something very powerful in this kingdom please let me have your attention in this kingdom there is a difference between wealth abundance and kingdom wealth there is a difference a difference between wealth abundance and kingdom wealth they are not the same and i'm going to tell you what the difference is for many people when they approach the subject of abundance and the subject of wealth or the subject of well-being generally 
they think that the way the world approaches this subject is the way the saints should approach the subject that is an error already the believer is governed by a set of beliefs there is an understanding that if you do not have you are not a true believer are we together there is a difference between wealth abundance and kingdom wealth and abundance that word kingdom makes all the difference i have taught you here and it bears repeating that you must understand the purpose of the blessings of the Lord. In the kingdom, you are already at a risk if you try to journey on the path to wealth and abundance without knowing why. The first thing you receive as a believer is an orientation as to why God prepared an economic system for you. The difference between carnality and a mundane pursuit that ends you up in the flesh or that which empowers you to be an effective witness is disorientation. I have taught you that there are three essential reasons why God blesses the saints, why he opens us up to abundance, sufficiency and wealth. Can I repeat it for your learning? Number one, to live a comfortable life. Write that down and never forget it. God is not against your living comfortably. Know this. God wants you and I to live a comfortable life whilst we serve him. It is the reason why sacrifice means a lot to him. Because you were not designed to live that way. God wants you to live a comfortable life. Number two, the second assignment behind your accessing the supplies of heaven in all its ramifications, whether finances or otherwise, the second reason is so that you can advance the cause of the kingdom. My God, please write that. Start it if you're writing and don't forget that. A bigger reason, a bigger motivation as to why you must manifest the blessings, why you must access finances, resources and abundance in the kingdom is so that you can make resources available for this kingdom come project. I will repeat it again for your hearing that the name of the Lord Jesus is very heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it high for the nations to see. Anybody who is incapacitated will not be able to do much for the kingdom in this end time. I tell you this from the integrity of scripture. If you are incapacitated financially, you will not be able to do much. Not for the kingdom, not for yourself, not for your family. Poverty and lack and want robs men of dignity. It reduces men to look like lower animals. Hallelujah. Advancement of the kingdom is the second reason why we are blessed in this kingdom. The third and final reason why God grants us access to resources and why he's bringing us into this prophetic season of abundance is to be able to be a blessing to the world in a practical and a definite way. Write that down, please. God wants you to be a blessing to all and sundry. According to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God wants you to be a blessing to people beyond the walls of religion, beyond the walls of Christianity, that society is able to experience the impact of the love of Jesus through your life and that principally through your giving. Show me a believer who loves Jesus, who loves society and has the means, the economic means. I show you one who will be a blessing to all, not just to Christians, not just to believers. There are many of you who already have compassionate hearts, but your limitations as far as communicating love and benevolence is lack of resources. And Satan wants it so because he knows you will never be able to help anyone with an empty hand. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The motivation behind your desire for wealth and abundance must be purified by this revelation. Must be purified by this revelation. There are many believers who like money. They love it to a point of obsession. They are carnally minded, driven by money. Usually they like preachers talking about subjects like this. Not necessarily because they love God. Not necessarily because they love his program. They just love the idea of being rich. They love the idea of being of means. They love the idea of being better than someone. That is not the kingdom's approach to the subject of abundance. God's goal is not for you to have more money than brother A or sister B and then flaunt it, marketing the flesh. No, that's not God's goal. 
God's goal is not just for you to celebrate that you have become, you have arrived, or as we call it in our vernacular here, you are blown. All that subject is complete nonsense from a kingdom standpoint. There is a greater and nobler approach. And this is what I'm teaching you. I tell you that there are many believers who will never access the supplies of heaven. The reason is not that they are not hardworking. The reason is not that they are not productive. There is a corruption in their heart. You have been weighed by God and you have been found to be better off without those resources. God has seen that if these resources step into your hand, you will be a danger to yourself. You will be a danger to your family, a danger to the body of Christ. It's like giving a small child a grenade and that child can detonate it plain and blow up himself, blow up everyone there. So God educates you and in order of priority, before he shows you his ways, he has to culture your understanding. The reason why I grant you access to financial resources, influence, any kind of supply is number one for your comfort. Number two, so that you will provide resources for kingdom advance. Number three, so that you can extend and reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way. Now I pray for you, any one of you who has been involved in any practice, financially speaking, that has drawn a cost to your life or to those around you, you see that now, the integrity of heart and loving Jesus, serving him and living for him even with your finance, your finance is also an act of worship. I pray for you, if there is any embargo that authorizes hell to keep recycling poverty and pain and want and lack around your life in the name of Jesus, let the blood speak. Let mercy speak. Let the blood speak. Let mercy speak. Therefore, by this impartation, go and prosper. Prosper mysteriously. Prosper miraculously. Prosper consistently. 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 In ever increasing dimensions. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Give When the prophet told the woman who was in debt, he said, go and borrow vessels. You thought it would be about oil. No, it was not about oil. It was not the oil that gave her money. Her money came from men. He said, now that you have the oil, I have prophesied some men that will be waiting for you. Go and sell it to them. They will be willing to buy it. Let me pray for someone. Your wisdom will not be a waste. The favor on you will not be a waste. I say it again, the men that must show up to honor the presence of wisdom, to honor the presence of favor, may God send them to you. May God bring them to you. Send them to you. Bring them to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And when those men come, may god walk upon their heart to open their hands financially towards you may god walk upon their heart to open their hands financially towards you hear me again may god walk upon their hearts to open their hands financially towards you in the name of jesus christ are you ready to receive favor father this grace that you have placed upon men called favor that can draw kings that can draw nobles that can rearrange a platform to honor a man upon everyone who is here let that grace rest upon you now let favor 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 rest upon you now in the name of Jesus final prayer for you listen to me covenant wealth kingdom wealth like I've taught you is hinged on your vowing before God that everything he brings to your life will be for your comfort his kingdom and the world around you your comfort his kingdom and the world around you your comfort 
his kingdom and the world around you by this agreement when you step into it god can be free to release to you now whatever comes because he knows it will not destroy you i'm praying for you grace to not be distracted by every blessing god gives receive it grace to take care of yourself your children your family when he blesses you receive that grace grace to support the work of the kingdom without coercion and manipulation receive it grace to be a blessing to everyone around you receive it in the name of jesus god will give you wealth that will last you will not go up today and down tomorrow you will not be wealthy today and be a beggar tomorrow in the name of jesus i am confident that the sermons you've immersed yourself in have served as a wellspring of blessings uplifting your life and instilling a profound commitment to wholeheartedly serve god we extend a warm invitation for you to become a subscriber to our youtube channel by activating the notification bell you ensure that you remain connected and never miss any of our upcoming videos your subscription signifies more than a mere click it represents a pledge to continual spiritual growth enlightenment and empowerment Embark on this faith-filled journey with us as our channel aspires to be a haven for both spiritual seekers and devoted believers. We ardently believe in the transformative power of God's Word, and our objective is to share messages that deeply resonate with your soul. Join our community, subscribe, and allow the radiant light of divine wisdom to illuminate your path. We express our gratitude for your integral role in this uplifting journey. And we pray that God's abundant blessings overflow in your life. Amen. Stay connected with us on all our social media platforms at Flaming Channel. And feel free to explore our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Thank you. And may God abundantly bless you.